everybody. Today we're going to be doing the 7.2 note on Pythagorean theorem triples. So our objective, students will be able to use Pythagorean triples to find missing sides and right triangles. Students will be able to solve problems involving Pythagorean triples. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this exploration. Consider the two triangles shown. Are they similar? What theorem or postulate did you use to make that decision? So if we take a look at our options here, let's go ahead and create a couple of proportions to double check that. So I have three over six should equal four over eight. If I go ahead and simplify those, let's see, I would get one over two is equal to one over two. So perfect, they each equal one half. So those are proportion. If we take a look, we have a side, an angle, and a side. So therefore, I can prove these similar by side, angle, side. We want to find the missing hypotenuse of the smaller triangle and hint to use the Pythagorean theorem. So if I do three squared plus four squared equals C squared, let's go ahead and leave that C. I'm gonna have nine plus 16 equals C squared, which will give me 25 equals c squared, and of course we'll take the square root to get rid of that square, and we get 5 equals c. So that means this third length here is 5. So says without using the Pythagorean theorem, find the missing hypotenuse of the larger triangle. What do you notice about the size of these triangles? So if we take a look at what we have here, 3 to 6, we're multiplying by 2, 4 to 8, we're also multiplying by 2. So there's a good chance if we take 5, multiply it by 2, I'll get 10. So the missing hypotenuse is 10, and the, it is twice the size. All right, let's go ahead and get into some vocabulary. So if a right triangle is a Pythagorean triple, then all three of its sides are positive integers. Common Pythagorean triples should be 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13, 7, 24, 25, and 8, 15, 17. Note the largest number is the hypotenuse. So we talked about that in 7.1, where that largest number is the hypotenuse, and we really need to keep that in mind. Also, we need to memorize those ones listed here. Um, these are going to be very helpful, especially throughout today's notes, if we start to get these memorized. And of course, as you need to, like, turn back to this page to see if you need to double check that stuff. All right, and then using Pythagorean triples, if a triangle is a dilation of a Pythagorean triple, then you can multiply by the scale factor to find a missing side. So first, identify which triple is being used. Second what is the scale factor, and three, multiply by that scale factor. Note, you can always use the Pythagorean theorem as well. So this is a good like fallback to be like, ooh, I'm not quite sure if this is a triple or not, um, because not every triangle is a Pythagorean triple. So if we're like, ooh, I'm not quite sure if it is or not, you can just lean back to the Pythagorean theorem and everything will be good. All right, so let's go ahead and do one through nine. So find the missing side of each right triangle by using the Pythagorean triples. So number one, we have 30, 40, and I'm trying to figure out what X is. Knowing what we know about the, about the Pythagorean triples, I can tell you that this side is three and this side is four. So therefore, if, I, if you can turn back to the other page and see, we have a Pythagorean triple that is three, four, five. Now what I need to do is figure out, okay, what is that scale factor? So to get to 3 to 30, I multiply by 10. So therefore, 5 to x, I also need to multiply by 10. So x equals 50. All right, so we identify what the triple is being used, what is the scale factor, and then multiply by that scale factor. Um, 50 and 14, so for any of these, I just find a common um, value in there. So therefore 50 and 14, I notice I can divide both of those by 2. So if I do that, I will get 7 and 25. And remember, we do have a Pythagorean triple that is 7, 24, 
25. So, so far, we're looking pretty good at where y should be a scale factor from 24. So, from four, 7 to 14, all I did was multiply by 2. So, therefore, 24 to y, I should also be multiplying by 2 to give me y equals 48. All right, let's go ahead and try out number 3. So, this should say 15 over here. So between 36 and 15, let's see, if I divide by 3, 3 goes into both of these. So therefore, 15 divided by 3 will give me 5. 36 divided by 3 will give me 12. I have a Pythagorean triple that is 5, 12, 13. So therefore, my third side should be a scale factor from 13. So from all we did was m divide by 3. So if I multiply by 3... That will give me my question mark. So question mark should equal 39. All right, I want you guys to go ahead and try 4, 5, and 6. So I'll give you guys a second. Go ahead and pause the video. Try that out on your own sheet of paper. All right, let's go ahead and take a look. So I set up the Pythagorean triples on the inside again, and then I multiplied by the value that was my scale factor. All right, let's go ahead and try a couple more. So let's take a look at 7 down here. So we have 4 over 7 and 3 over 7. Yes, these kind of look intimidating, but if we notice, they both have the denominators the same. So if I really pay attention to the numerators, I have 4 and 3, which means my hypotenuse can be 5. So remember, we have a triple that is 3, 4, 5. Since all we did was divide by 7, that means x equals 5 over 7. So whenever you have that common denominator between all of your fractions, you can use that and just really pay attention to those numerators. Okay, let's try that again with number 8. So once again, I notice I have 11s in the denominator, so if I take a look at my numerators, which is 13 and 12, I know I have a triple that is 5, 12, 13, so my missing side would be 5. Now, all I need to do is add that denominator, so y equals 5 over 11. Alright, go ahead and try number 9. Give you a second to try it, and then I'll scroll over. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at number 9. So here we have 25 and 7. That third side would be 24, and all I did was divide by 13. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at 13, or sorry, not 13, 10. And we want to use the Pythagorean triples to find x. So if I notice, I have a couple of right triangles here. So the first one is this 3, 4, 5 triangle that I see. Remember, so we do have a triangle that is 3, 4, 5. So therefore, 5 will be my hypotenuse here. Now, my second right triangle there and <clears throat> so far my two sides are 5 and 12 and so that third side should be 13 with using the Pythagorean triples which leaves me with x equals 13. So once again you can use the Pythagorean theorem we could have done 3 squared plus 4 squared equals c squared find out that side is 5 and then do 5 squared plus 12 squared equals x squared and find that x is 13. Um, if you remember, start to remember these Pythagorean triples, some of these problems become a lot simpler to do and a lot quicker. Now, with that in mind, not all right triangles are Pythagorean triples. If the sides of a right triangle do not form a Pythagorean triple, then use the Pythagorean theorem to find the missing side. So 11 through 14. We want to find the missing side for each right triangle. If needed, write your answer as a simplified radical. So if we take a look at 11, now that we've gotten used to our triples, you might be saying, thinking, oh, well, this is 3, 4, 5. But remember, the longest side needs to be the hypotenuse. The 5 is not the hypotenuse. So therefore, this is not a Pythagorean triple. So I can go ahead and plug this in to the Pythagorean theorem to find for g. So now I have 9 plus 25 equals g squared. 
and we have 34, square root of 34, is equal to g squared, oh sorry, I jumped ahead. We had 34 is equal to g squared, and then you take the square root. Doubling up on my properties there. All right, so let's go ahead, 34, I noticed that that's an even number, two times 17. Now I'm at both prime numbers, so I can't simplify that anymore, which means g just equals the square root of 34. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at number 12. So if we can find a Pythagorean triple, we can use that, but always remember that we can use the Pyth or Pyth Pythagorean theorem. So let's go ahead and take a second and use that Pythagorean theorem. So 10 squared plus w squared equals 26 squared, which will give me 100, plus w squared is equal to 676. Subtract 100 from both sides, I get 576, and then we go ahead and take that square root, and w equals 24. So I now find out what w is. Since it is a whole number, you know, in my head I might be thinking, huh, I might have a Pythagorean triple. I notice that I can divide both of these numbers by 2, which would be 5 and 13. And I do have a triple that's 5, 12, and 13. So therefore, I could have noticed that I had this Pythagorean triple there. But maybe you missed it. Maybe you didn't see it right away. That's okay. You can always lie back on this Pythagorean theorem. It'll always work for us no matter what. All right, I want you guys to go ahead and try 13 and 14. I'll give you a second, pause that video, try those two out. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at that. So 13, we had to use the Pythagorean theorem. 14, we could have noticed that we had a Pythagorean triple, or if you didn't quite notice that, you could have used the Pythagorean theorem as well. Both will get you the same result. All right. 13, or example 15, I don't know what's up with me in example 13 today, uh, Garrett left his work and drove 16 miles north, so if he's at work here, he drove 16 miles north, then he turned 90 degrees and drove 30 miles west, how far was his starting location, pin dry right triangle, so we want to know how far he was away if he took that straight path there, so I'm going to first, especially since we're working with these Pythagorean triples, I'm going to get a check to see if I have any. So 30 and 16, let's see, I could divide by 2, and that will give me 15 and 8. And I definitely have a Pythagorean triple that is 8, 15, 17. So my hypotenuse is 17. Now I have to just really pay attention to that scale factor. 15 to 30, I multiply by 2, so 17 to my missing side out here, I also need to be multiplied by 2. That would be 34, so therefore he was 34 miles away. Alright, in example 16, find the area and the perimeter of the right triangle shown. So first you have to know all three of the sides, especially for the perimeter because you have to add all the sides together. We have a um, Pythagorean triple, so 3, 4, 5. Alright, let's go ahead and remind ourselves how we find area. So to find area is 1 half times the base times the height. So my base is 4 and my height is 3. And I'm dividing that whole thing by 2. So 4 times 3 is 12. So 1 half times 12, which will give me 6. So the area equals 6. And then, of course, the perimeter, you just add up all the sides together. So I have 5 plus 3 plus 4. Once I do that, I would get 12. So my perimeter is 12. All right, and that is the end of 7.2. If you have any questions, please be sure to ask the teacher, and have a wonderful rest of your day.